Hi, Terry Shanefeld here from UAB School of Medicine. In this video I'd like to discuss the importance of randomization, what it is and why it's needed in therapeutic studies. So this is a study which tries to determine if a surgical procedure is better than a medication. On the left over here we have patients who are potential enrollees in the study and the patients who are red tend to be sicker while the patients in blue tend to be healthier. Now in this particular study the surgeons get to decide to which arm the patients are enrolled. And the reason is, is that the surgeons in real life are monitored for their morbidity and mortality so they want to make sure that optimal surgical candidates go to the operating room. So as you can see over here if you look at the final enrollees they're much more healthier patients in the surgical arm than in the medical arm. And let's say in this study the surgical arm proves that it is better at controlling this condition than a medication. The question then I would have to ask is was a surgery really better or was it because healthier patients were enrolled in this arm? This is that same study though done in a randomized fashion. So again we have our enrollees over here where the red patients are sicker, the blue patients are healthier, but now instead of the surgeons deciding a randomization procedure is done and randomization is just a tool that helps put patients in one arm of a study or another. It does it randomly, sort of like a coin flip. And every time a patient comes up, since there are two arms of the study, the patient has a 50% chance of getting in the medical arm and a 50% chance of getting in the surgical arm. And what you can see after randomization is that there are equal numbers of healthy and sick patients in both the surgical and the medical arms. So randomization allows this study to have subjects who are comparable. And what it allows is us to isolate the effect of surgery versus medication and not have it be confused by extraneous factors like patient's prognosis. So let's see an example of this in what it looks like in real life. Now this on the left here is the nurse's health study. And it was a study that tried to see if hormone replacement therapy in postmenopausal women, here I'll just show estrogen and progesterone, was it better than women who had never used hormones in preventing cardiovascular disease? Now what I'll do here with these blue arrows is show you some traditional cardiovascular risk factors like family history of cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, and smoking. And what you can see on average is the women who were using hormone replacement therapy were healthier than the women who had never used hormones. There was less smoking, uh, there was less diabetes, less hypertension and less family history of cardiovascular disease. Now on the right this is the Women's Health Initiative, a randomized controlled trial that tried to answer the same question whether hormone replacement therapy was better than nothing in preventing cardiovascular disease. And I'll show you those similar risk factors here with red arrows and what you can see now is that the percentages of patient with these factors in each arm were equal. So just as many women were smokers in both arms, just as many women had diabetes, just as many women had hypertension. So this observational study where the physicians and the patients decided to which arm they went in had an imbalance in prognostic factors. Whereas this randomized trial where randomization chose whether you were in one arm or the other resulted in a balance of these prognostic factors. So why is randomization so important? Well the reason is that equally distributes prognostic factors and those prognostic factors are things that impact whether a patient develops an outcome of a disease or not. And importantly it equally distributes not necessarily the known prognostic factors but importantly things that we don't know about, we either didn't measure or don't even know exist will be equalized between the intervention and control groups. And it's very interesting that as we've developed potential risk factors for disease and something like um, CRP comes to mind. When researchers have gone back to studies done decades ago from stored sera and measured them between the two groups, CRP levels are exactly the same between the intervention and control groups. And back then we didn't even know CRP uh, was a risk factor. So the true power is really the equal distribution of unknown prognostic factors between groups. And that's the great benefit of randomization and why we really want to use randomized trials to answer questions of therapy, effectiveness, and efficacy. Hope you understand more about the importance of randomization when you're looking at a therapeutic study. 
Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the Contact Me section of my blog. Have a great day.